This is lesson 2-6, which is the quadratic formula. Our essential question is, how can you use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations or to predict the nature of their solutions? So first off, starting with what is the quadratic formula? So the quadratic formula is a way to find the solution of a quadratic equation. So where the, the graph of the parabola is crossing your x-axis. Um, we've looked in the previous couple lessons, we've looked at how you can solve using factoring and how you can solve using completing the square. But sometimes you have equations that can't be solved either way. So um, the quadratic formula works to find the solutions of a quadratic equation for any quadratic equation that you have. Um, so if we think of our standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, you're going to use those a, b, and c values to plug into the quadratic formula. You need to make sure that your equation is always set equal to zero before you find the a, b, and c values. Okay, so our first example, what are the values of x? Um, what values of x solve the equation? So we're going to use our quadratic formula. So I'm going to put up here, we have negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, our a is 3, our b is negative 4, and our c is negative 9. And be sure to include those negative values. Um, the minus is acting as a negative with that number. Okay, so this is going to be negative, negative 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared. And notice how when I plug in my a, b, and c values, I'm putting parentheses around them. That's important, and it's going to help you simplify the correct way. Minus 4 times 3 times negative 9, all over 2 times 3. Okay. So sometimes with formulas, people feel like this is super simple. I'm just plugging in numbers and typing it into the calculator and the calculator is giving me my answer. So what I want to point out is that with the quadratic formula, it's important to simplify in the correct order. So you don't want to just plug this whole thing into the calculator and hope that the calculator is going to give you the correct answer. So I'll tell you my order of how I like to simplify because it usually prevents errors. So first step, I'm going to simplify the negative negative 4 and make it positive 4. I'm also going to simplify the denominator and make it 6. Okay, now here's my suggestion. Sometimes you're going to get negative numbers underneath the square root because you might have a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis. So to avoid having your calculator just tell you it it's an error and can't do that, I would suggest keeping the square root on your first step and just simplifying what's underneath. So taking your calculator or your brain and just doing negative four squared minus four times three times negative nine, and you should get 124. That tells me this quadratic actually crosses the x-axis because we're gonna have two real solutions, okay? Now, I want to simplify the square root of 124 so I'm going to make a factor tree here. So I know it's 2 times 62. And then 62 is 2 times 31. So that means that I have a pair of 2s. So I can pull one of them out. So this would become 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 31 over 6. So now the reason I did that is because I can reduce that down. I can say, okay... 4, 2, and 6 all are divisible by 2, so I can simplify this and write it as 2 plus or minus square root of 31 over 3. So these, this is the exact answer. Okay, so you need to be careful. Sometimes it will ask you for an exact answer. Sometimes it will ask you to um, find the decimal value and round to three decimal places or something like that. And if that's the case, in my calculator, I would type in, I'd put parentheses, 2 plus the square root of 31 divided by 3 or 2 minus the square root of 31 divided by 3. 
So that's how I would type it in so I make sure I get the correct answer. So again, be careful when you're doing the assignment. If it wants exact, then what I have in the box here, that's our exact answer. Um, if it wants decimal values, you're going to type that in to find the decimal values into your calculator. Okay, so our next example, it says, how can you determine the number and types of roots for a quadratic equation? So there's three pictures here. This one, this first graph, shows that we have two solutions, so two real solutions. This second graph, the vertex is on the x-axis, which means we only have one solution. And then the third example we have, it's not crossing the x-axis at all, which we know from when we talked about complex numbers, this means it's going to be two complex solutions. So you don't have to do the whole quadratic formula to determine what type of solution you have. You can use what's called the discriminant. So the discriminant is the part that's underneath the square root. So we know that if the square root turns out to be, if the number under the square root is a positive number, like our last example, that's going to give us two real solutions. If it's a negative underneath the square root, that, note, that means we're going to have i in our answer and we're going to have two complex solutions. Now, where you'd only have one solution is if you get zero under the square root because the square root of zero is just zero. And so you're only going to have one answer if that's the case. So over here, this outlines those three situations. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, two real roots. If it's equal, one real root, and if it's less than zero, has two non-real roots or two complex roots. Okay, so we're going to look at an example that I did in the notes here. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 8. So I can, without doing the whole quadratic formula, I can determine what type of solutions I'm going to have. So our a value is 1 our B value is two and our C value is eight. So I'm going to just do the discriminant, B squared minus four AC. So that would be two squared minus four times one times eight. So we know that would be four minus 32, which is equal to negative 28. So by doing just the discriminant, I know that this is going to have two complex solutions or two complex roots. Okay, so again, the discriminant can tell us which situation we're talking about. So our last example is a real life situation. Rachel is about to serve and tosses a tennis ball straight up into the air. The height h of the ball in meters at time t in seconds is given by h of t equals negative 5t squared plus 5t plus 2. Will the ball reach a height of 4 meters? So we, what you need to think of here is we have three situations again that we could have. So we could have the ball goes up and it, here's 4 meters and it does not reach 4 meters. We could have where the ball goes up and just turns around right at 4 meters. So it has one solution there. And then we could also have where the ball goes up above four meters and comes back down. So those are our three situations. So we can use this idea of the discriminant in the previous example um, to determine whether or not the ball is going to reach four meters. So the first step I need to do is I need to take my equation, 5t squared plus 5t plus 2, and I don't want to know if it's going to equal 0. I want to know if it's going to equal 4. So I need to put it equal to 4. Okay, and then I want to, in order to do the discriminant, we have to have it set equal to 0. So my next step is I need to subtract 4 from both sides. So then I have negative 5t squared plus 5t minus 2 equals 0. So my A is negative 5, my B is 5, and my C is negative 2. So I would do B squared, so 5 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 2, and we're going to get negative 15. So that means that it's this situation and no, the ball will not 
reach four meters, okay? Because it was negative. If it was a positive number, then we could say yes. If it was a zero, we could also say yes. So again, the piece that people always forget about these type of problems is you have to set it equal to the number that you're trying to determine if it's going to reach, and then you have to get your quadratic equal to zero. So that's your first step on these type of problems. Okay, let me know if there's any questions.